Hello, Paul Harvey fans. It's an abnormally cold day here in North Louisiana for November. It's about 30 degrees out here today. But I've got a question. What could make a man leave his loving wife and children behind? A wife and children he dearly loved. Would it be another woman? A better opportunity? A lack of luck? Freedom? To explain what I'm talking about, here's Paul Harvey. Now, the rest of the story. It was a chilly night, November of 1836, when John kissed his wife and children and left home forever. He'd not had much of a choice, really, not with the county sheriff preparing to arrest him. John's absence would be hard on his four small daughters and on his wife, six months pregnant. But if the youngsters had to do without daddy, better to imagine him free somewhere, anywhere, than to know he was behind bars. If only John had done something terribly wrong, something deserving of such punishment. In fact, the whole trouble with John was just a lack of luck. But that brings us to the rest of the story. John's misfortune had begun five years earlier when he, a blacksmith age 27, decided it was time to open his own shop. And since John had not saved quite enough money to start up all by himself, he accepted the support of a silent partner, a fellow named Jay Wright. And that may have been John's first mistake. Anyway, the Vermont village of Leicester, Leicester Four Corners, needed a good smithy. They got one in John, at least until his shop burned to the ground. John reported the bad news to his partner, Mr. Wright. Both men agreed that accidents do happen. The Leicester Four Corners still needed a blacksmith, so the partners scraped together some more cash and rebuilt the shop, and everything was going fine for a few months. That's about how long it took for the second shop to burn down. Again, Mr. Wright helped John to rebuild, but by then villagers were patronizing another smithy and John was soon out of business. He worked for another company for a while repairing stagecoaches. The job provided John's family with the security of a regular income. The only thing missing for John personally was a, well, a challenge. So less than a year later, John was back on his own back in business for himself, another blacksmith shop, this one in the town of Hancock near his wife's parents. What do you know, this venture succeeded, and without a partner. In fact, John might have remained in Hancock, Vermont for the rest of his life, the prosperous proprietor of his own blacksmith shop, had his former business partner not learned of John's success. You see, John still owed Jay Wright some money, a considerable amount of money. And the latter was determined to collect his debt and immediately. So I guess you know the rest. Threatened with imprisonment and confiscation of all of his property, John fled Vermont, left his family behind, never to return. He ran until he was confident that nobody could find him. He stopped running when he reached Grand Detour, Illinois. And yet that bitter autumn begat an unexpectedly sweet spring. Had John stayed back east, the best he could have hoped to become was a successful smithy, but forced to flee to a land where the prairie soil fouled the old-fashioned iron plow. John new-fashioned one, a self-scouring steel plow, and that plow made him famous. Today, a world-renowned company, home based in Illinois, bears the name of its founder, a name which has since become synonymous with agriculture, the name John Deere. But the next time you see that name on the cowl of a tractor, you'll recall one chilly night when a Vermont blacksmith's last dream died. For you will know the rest of the story. John Deere forever changed farming. Prior to Deere's steel plow, most farmers used iron or wooden plows. The rich Midwestern soil stuck to these types of plow, which caused lots of wear and required frequent cleaning. The smooth-sided steel plow solved this problem. Deere's plow glided through the soil like a warm knife through butter. His plow greatly aided migration into the American Great Plains in the 19th and early 20th centuries. Deere & Company ranked number 84 in the 2020 Fortune 500 list of largest United States corporations. John Deere even made his way into songs about farming. 
Keith Urban sang, I learned everything I need to know from John Cougar, John Deere, and John 316. In 1993, Joe Diffie released a country music hit, John Deere Green. Vince Gill sings in One More Last Chance, Well, she might have took my car keys, but she forgot about my old John Deere. Can you think of any other songs which mention John Deere? I'm Brad Dyson. Thanks for watching.